everyone, my name is Nicole Fegan and I have read many good books in my time. In this video I'm going to be talking about the six books I could recommend to anyone. They are not necessarily my six favorite books of all time, nor are they the, like, the six books I think everyone has to read because they're so important. They're more just like six books that I think anyone, regardless of your taste or like your reading level, could enjoy. Up first we have Norwegian Wood by Haruki Murakami. Um, this is the only Murakami I've ever read, and I know that he's usually known for like a lot of magical realism and odd plot devices, but this to me is just a standard beautiful novel. This book is about a Japanese man named Toru who is looking back on his college years in the 1960s when he was in love with and involved with this woman named Naoko who he was kind of connected to because of a tragedy that they had both experienced in their teens. Naoko has some pretty heavy mental health issues that the book touches on and um, like follows her journey, but mostly what I love about this book is it is just like a beautiful portrait of college life. I have not been a college college student anywhere but the United States and I think to see that like these Tokyo students in the 1960s were dealing with like the same interpersonal issues as like all of us deal with now I think is really interesting especially because this book is like so heavily rooted in nostalgia that it's not happening exactly in the present tense you know that Toru is thinking back to these experiences and so I think as like a love story as a story about mental health as a story about nostalgia and like a, a story that does like critical commentary and youth commentary it's talking a lot about like what it means to be a college student and like kind of a revolutionary there's a lot of that talk in here it's just all it's really interesting and more than anything written so beautifully. I really want to read more Murakami, but for right now this is the only one I can recommend, and I think it would work for pretty much anyone. Up next we have Bluettes by Maggie Nelson. This is a poetry book. Let's talk about it. Bluettes is a poetry slash prose poetry book that is split up into these short vignettes. There is about 240 of them in this book, and it is about um, Maggie Nelson writing about Blue. She set out to write a book, a poetry book about Blue, and each of the vignettes kind of like deals with a meditation on Blue while she is simultaneously talking us and taking us through her own experience of heartbreak. The book deals so much with like what is the experience of Blue and can we experience Blue both like in art and in life and I think as both like a philosophical project about like can we experience color or whatever and as just a poetry collection it works so well. I know poetry is something that can be really tough to get into if you haven't spent a lot of time either reading it or writing it or studying it and I think this is both really really effective and beautiful poetry while being really accessible. Because of its prose format while there is so much you can like look into about the language itself you don't have to deal with like the scariness of verse which I do understand is scary like even I sometimes pick up a poetry collection and I'm someone who's like read and written poetry for many years and I'm I'm scared of it but I feel like this um it doesn't hold your hand or anything that's not what I'm going for but it doesn't scare you at least I'd hope not and at the same time I think it has a lot more going for it than a lot of modern poetry not that all modern poetry is bad but I know there are some people who don't love just like the three line poem style and this definitely is not that it has a lot of depth and a, there's so much richness in the conversations um, and so I recommend it to poetry readers and non-poetry readers alike. The odds that you've heard of one of those books is pretty high. I know Murakami and Maggie Nelson are both like figures that people talk about, but my sleeper hit that I recommend to people when like they've already read all the cool stuff and they need to know an underground book is Burial Rites by Hannah Kent. I picked up this book in high school because I was and am obsessed with Iceland. I found out that there was a book coming out set in Iceland and I was like, oh, I need to get my hands on that and I read it and I love it for so many more reasons besides the fact that it's set in Iceland. This is based on the true story of the last ever woman executed in Iceland. It is about this woman named Agnes who is sentenced to death for the murder of two men and before her execution she is sent to go live with this rural family who like obviously doesn't want to host her but like they are be being forced to host her and the majority of the book is seeing like their lives and Agnes living there while she is telling her story. So it kind of goes back and forth between past and present. There's also a lot of um, perspective changes, not narrative changes, it's always just like this third person, but like kind of in the middle of the page if there's like a long paragraph break it'll just go to someone completely different or a scene that's completely different. And that's something I've always loved in literature. I love multiple perspectives and multiple characters and multiple narrators and so this really scraps that itch for me. 
I think the main thing this book does well is its attempt to humanize Agnes. Um, because there is kind of this question throughout the whole book and you're obviously only getting Agnes's perspective of like, is she guilty for the thing that she's about to be killed for? And even if she's guilty of that, um, did the people deserve it is kind of an interesting question. And by the end, I feel like you just feel for all the characters. You feel for the family she's with, you feel for her. And it is just like this beautiful exploration set in like this lush background of like the Icelandic countryside and it is it's beautiful. Up next this is the only book I'm going to be talking about that I actually don't own physically um, and that is The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison. I think Toni Morrison is an author that everyone should read. I think that um, on a personal level I think she's brilliant and on a less personal level I think her works are so important. I toyed with talking about Beloved because I think that is my personal favorite Toni Morrison, but I do think there are certain elements of that, kind of like the mythical elements, that I can understand not being everyone's cup of tea. So instead, we have The Bluest Eye, which I believe is Toni Morrison's first book. This is about an 11-year-old black girl named Pecola Breedlove in Ohio who dreams about having beautiful blue eyes. You follow her through her interactions um, with white children and with black children and with her family and with uh, a whole assortment of adults in her neighborhood and you kind of just watch this like tragedy of this young girl's life. The reason why I chose this one um, is that I think it is so important without being impenetrable. I don't think it is doing too many like weird or wacky things with the story or with the narration um, but yet it's still doing so much. I think it's kind of like tackling the sort of conformity that comes from like the oppression of whiteness. Um, specifically, the, the beginning of the book is something I think about a lot and have thought about ever since I read this in high school. It's just this short little opening of this like, not really a fairy tale, but it's like, this is the house, this is Bob, and this is Sally, and they have a dog. And then they that exact same text is repeated but there are like fewer spaces and then the last time it's repeated it's just like all one big word and it's like showing this the absurdity of this notion that like plagues Pecola's life. That there's this standard, this blonde haired, blue eyed, white standard that she wants to live up to because she wants to be beautiful. And this book does so much in deconstructing that and like and, and in and in just like showing the story of someone that you care for so much. I will say, however, um, while these are books I recommend for everyone, massive um, like content warning for this book. This is not an easy book um, in terms of its discussions on race and also its portrayal of sexual abuse. It is something I would definitely look into before reading, um, but if it is something you feel comfortable reading, I really, really recommend it. Up next, my second book in this video with eyes on the cover, and that is Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. This book is a sci-fi dystopian book. It's like pretty much the only book in this whole bunch that is not just like standard realistic fiction or poetry. In this dystopian society, people are born and brought up to be eventually, to eventually give their lives and be organ donors for other people in society. So this follows a group of friends, um, Kathy, Ruth, and Tommy, and that is what their life is. Um, you kind of watch them be in this like isolated boarding school and discover what their lives are going to be about. Um, so you have that element, but you also just have three friends who are learning about life and learning about love. You see them when they're a little bit younger and then when they go to this second, um, I feel like it's called like the cottages or something and like the relationship between them starts to kind of fall apart because normal puberty has happened and normal emotions are happening and it's just interesting watching this from their perspective because I don't think you know it from the very beginning but you figure out what their like purpose in this world is and it is heartbreaking to watch them like go through the motions of life when you know they're going to have to give their life and they know they're going to have to give their life and watching all of them reckon with that is really interesting because it brings up all these questions of purpose like we're all here and we're also all gonna die so like are we any different from Kathy, Ruth, or Tommy at all? Like what is life if not living and then dying you know? Um, and I, I don't know I just find that question really interesting. I wrote in my notes that this is the most human sci-fi book I've ever read um, and I feel that way. I feel like if you like sci-fi, it, this is almost like the low sci-fi 
to low fantasy. This sentence is going off the rails. But you know how like low fantasy is just like our world but with a little tiny element. This is like our world but just this added element and it just feels like you're watching these people with this backdrop that's always ominously there. It's wonderful. The final book in this video is a complete cop-out because in fact I do not recommend this to everyone. I recommend this to almost no one, to very few select people, and I'll talk about why it's in this video in a moment, and that is The Waves by Virginia Woolf. This is my favorite book of all time. I'm sure over the course of this channel's history I'm going to talk about this way too much, but I've only talked about it once so far, so I am going to let myself talk about it again. First off, what is this book about? This is about a group of six friends, Neville, Bernard, Lewis, Ginny, Rhoda, Susan, and you follow them from childhood to death. The book is told um, by, I want, it's like basically like narrativistic soliloquies, like the book is narrated by all six of them, um, and they each get like a paragraph, or they each get a few pages, or they each get a sentence at certain points in the book, um, and the whole book feels like a dream. It feels like a poem. It's the most beautifully written book of all time. The reason I usually don't recommend this book is that when I picked this up for the first time, it was the summer before my freshman year of college. It was the first Virginia Woolf book I ever read, and it was too confusing for me. I always say that it, it was like solving a 1,000 piece puzzle, but I didn't know what the picture was supposed to look like, so while I could tell it was supposed to be pretty, I was just so frustrated the whole time and couldn't get into it. But looking back on it, I think that if I had picked this up for the first time now, just just like had been a little bit smarter and read a little bit more literature and was a little bit more open-minded, I would have loved it from the first read. I think this book says everything about life. Um, I think it says everything you need to know about friendship, about love, about priority. I have this kind of theory that like each of the six characters represents something like essential about life. So okay, let's see. Bernard represents creativity and Neville represents love and Lewis represents like status or like um, ambition. Um, Susan represents nature, Ginny represents the body, and um, Rhoda represents like the self, the inner world. And I think the brilliant thing about this book is Virginia Woolf does not pick a side. There's no like, well Ginny sucks because she just like wants to have sex and be pretty. Like no, I think Ginny is as humanized as someone like Bernard who is like the writer of the bunch and obviously Virginia Woolf's a writer and so like you'd think that like, I don't know, you'd think there'd be a hierarchy but there's not. I think this book has found me and passages from this book have found me at times in my life when I've needed it most. I think if you some, you're someone who knows me in real life and you're like, what's Nicole like really on the inside? This is the book I would recommend to like understand me fully. Like this might be the one piece of art in the world that I think gets me more than anything else. This perhaps has the most soul of any piece of art I've ever consumed. It's like, it's truly just like the most brilliant thing ever made. I'm just gonna like sit here and talk about this book forever. But basically, this book is not for everyone because it is very challenging. But if you are someone who wants a challenging read, this is the book I will recommend time and time and time again. So those are the six books that I recommend to everyone or basically everyone. Um, if you've read any of these, I would love to hear your thoughts. If you end up reading one of these because of my recommendation, please let me know. I would be literally overjoyed. And I'd love to know what books you recommend. Like when someone just asks you for a book recommendation, do you have a stock answer? Or are you a normal person and you don't think about things like this? At any rate, uh, that is all I have for you guys today, and thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time. We're rocking in the chair. <laughs> oh, I'm about to go film another video right after this, and I don't want to, guys.